up. Contestant number two. Dave Gibson, the cat. The cat, Dave Gibson. Good advice is important. And surrounding yourself with wise advisors is even more so. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Several years ago, I was called to the aid of my good friend, Daryl Klippenstein. Now, Daryl had some sort of toe infection and needed to go to the doctor. Unfortunately, he had taken some medicine which prevented him from driving. So I was enlisted to drive the eight miles from our town to the next and get him to the doctor. Now something about my friend Daryl that you should know, he is the most straight-laced person I've ever met. Never took a drink, never swore, and at this point in time, he was in his final year of seminary school. And I was taking a little bit of pleasure by the fact that he was slightly stoned. <laughs> As we pulled out onto the highway, I was momentarily distracted by Daryl's medicated blathering when a small animal ran in front of the car. And I'd like to tell you that I used defensive driving techniques and safely maneuvered around the animal and continued on our way, but that's not what happened. And I slipped to the side of the road, but not before hearing the thump of impact. Daryl looked over at me and said, I think you hit something. <laughs> Gee, I think? We piled out of the car to go investigate, and then I saw it. It was a small black and white cat laying on its side, looking like it was having a hard time drawing breath. Looked up at me with one milky eye. Daryl standing behind me said, is it dead? And I said, it's barely hanging on, Daryl. Wait here. Daryl ran back to the car and returned with a shovel. What are you going to do with that? The animal is obviously suffering. And I've got to put it out of its misery. I'm going to whack it. <laughs> <laughs> whack it? Okay, Reverend Hitman. How much medicine did you take? <laughs> The words were barely out of my mouth when Daryl, swaying like a drunken ninja, rah, rah! I grabbed the shovel, I looked at the cat, twin shovel imprints to the left and to the right. <laughs> Give me that, you lunatic! What are you trying to do, scare it to death? <laughs> but as I turned around, I realized that Daryl was right. The animal was suffering and needed to be put out of its misery. And while I hated to do it, it had to be done. Once finished, I turned back to the car, feeling horrible, when Daryl stated the obvious. We can't just leave it there. What if some kid comes along looking for his cat and finds it all mashed up like this? <laughs> what should we do? We'll bury it later. Just bring it with us. <laughs> so I scooped up the cat. We put it in Daryl's truck along with the murder weapon. <laughs> and we were on our way. I was surprised a couple of miles down the road when a town police car came speeding up behind me, lights blazing, beckoning me to pull over. I pulled over, confused. I, I didn't think I was speeding, and I didn't know why I was being pulled over. My confusion grew as the cop walked towards my car with his hand on his gun and said, you there, get out of that car and keep your hands where I can see them. <laughs> We've had a complaint of two individuals physically insulting a pet cat and thereafter stealing said cat and they got away in a vehicle with this license plate. What do you have to see for yourself, you sick puppy? <laughs> no, 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 that's not at all what happened. You see, I was driving and the cat came out of the road and I didn't know what to do and I, I hit the cat and I had to put it out of its suffering and you know, couldn't leave it there because some kid came along so we put it in the trunk. 
the officer made me repeat this. And for some reason, he wanted me to walk on a line and touch my fingers. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was all about. But once I finished, he said to me, so you're telling me you've got a dead cat in your trunk right now? Well, yes, sir, I do. Show me. So I walked around, popped the trunk. There was a cat. There was a shovel. And the cop said, go with me. We walked around to the front of the car, where he pointed at the grill of the car. And there, mashed into the grill of the car, was the cat that I hit oh, no. with the car. <laughs> and the cop said, for the love of Christmas, I'm not going to try and explain this one. You're coming with me. I was loaded into the back of the car and taken to meet Mrs. Penner. Now, Mrs. Penner was a lovely elderly lady who had a cat of 16 to 20 years. It was mostly crippled and blind. And every day she took her cat and set it out on a nice sunny patch by the side of the road <laughs> so it could get some fresh air while she sat on her porch and read or knit or whatever she did. Now, she didn't see us hit the cat on the road. All she saw was we stopped the car, we came out, took turns hitting her cat, <laughs> and then stole it. <laughs> I spent the next few minutes trying to explain, and, and fortunately the cop was there, and he did confirm that I had actually hit a cat with my car. I was later released without further incident, promising to be paid closer attention to my surroundings. <laughs> so my fellow Toastmasters, make sure that those who advise you are wise and unmedicated, <laughs> and you can avoid bad advice and bad results. <laughs> Mr. Toastmasters.